This has been a big week in crypto, and today we're going to be diving into a project that has been in crypto for a long time, probably one of the OGs. You guys are going to love it. Uh, my name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. Joining me today is Sebastian Bourget, who is the co-founder and COO over at Sandbox. Great to have you, Sebastian. It's a pleasure to be back. Hi, Paul. Hi, everyone. It's good. Uh, it's good to see. Well, you know, I think when we get a chance to talk to founders who's been in the space this long and have seen, you know, a few bull runs, you've seen the cycle of Web3 kind of get birthed and, you know, really a lot happen. I think that many people may not be fully aware of that are brand new to crypto. Give us uh, kind of a rundown currently on Sandbox and its growth. How many active players are you guys currently sporting? Right. So Sandbox, we've been one of the pioneers in the space of uh, like uh, providing a decentralized virtual world where anyone can become a creator, publish an experience on the map, truly own their creation thanks to the use of blockchain technology. We're still in alpha stage and we've made a lot of progress uh, this past year in 2053. Finally, like any of our 27,000 landowners can publish an experience on the map and in just in a matter of Three months, we have close to 700 experiences that are live and playable made by uh, creators. We have uh, on a monthly basis between 50,000 and 100,000 active users who are either creating, because creating is playing on the sandbox, building the open metaverse is part of the game, or exploring the various experiences and uh, content that you can see on this map that also from one of the 400 top brands that we onboarded in the field of music, culture, entertainment, fashion, sports, and more. Talk to me a little bit about uh, how many creators right now are building on GameMaker. So it's really exciting. Like we really focus on like uh, being creator first. We've updated our game maker recently with a major release that adds more multiplayer, more fun, uh, many more gameplay possible, and we're seeing a rising number of uh, creators who are using and participating. We just recently opened uh, the Builder Challenge that's going to distribute over the next 10 weeks, 1 million sand as reward for the creator who publish and onboard new users to the platform. And on a daily basis, we have tens of thousands of creators who are using the software for more than two hours a day, creating those new form of experience that leverage like social interaction, that leverage uh, like content that you don't find on other platforms, uh, like both on the narrative side, but also on utilizing the official NFTs from those brand and IPs that we bring. This is also being driven by the game jams that we introduce. So when you join, uh, when you arrive on the Sandbox website, you can find those um, game video game competition where you create and you can earn rewards. And you can create games for your most favorite IPs, like The Walking Dead, Care right. Bears, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So we call it build to earn. And I think it's an essential concept, like you're learning skills, you're creating experience, you're contributing to build this finite world, which we were showing the map before 166, mm -hmm. 164 lands. And this is a social project that we are doing together. And that's, I think, something really new where combining IPs, combining user generated content and recreating a world together is something that is really fresh. Think about what Minecraft users were doing with when exactly. they were building Atlas or the Washington library. It, there is kind of this feeling of creating an open world together in Sandbox as well. I want to go over to a clip real quick. Let me play this for you. It's talking about the success of Power World. Listen in. You know, Power yeah. World was able to launch. They were a game preview. They launched in Game Pass. They also simultaneously launched in Steam. And through the combination of those things, you know, Pocket Pair was able to have this outsized success. Amazing. And it was the largest third party Game Pass launch ever. And that's all because we give creators options on how they can launch their games. We've got subscription, we've got retail, we've got free to play, we've got game preview, we have the consoles, we have our experience on PC, and they can access all of those things. We know it's working. But being able to, to be able to get this launch uh, simultaneously on various platforms, I think is a big key thing. I was also looking at this tweet right here. New idea for Game Maker tutorial, exploring the ability to hire your own crypto crew can follow and protect you. Kind of uh, very thematic around Pokemon in reality, but, but very creative. When you look at things like that and you wonder around the success of where Sandbox could go, seeing what we've seen now by a very small studio that has been able to do this. What do you make of this? Do you feel like this is going to really start to forge a new trail? 
I, I do think so. I think the future of gaming is toward like user generated content. Like there's no doubt about it. And like there is no limit toward like the, the the creativity and the power of imagination of the crowd. And we're living in a space where like like gaming is still we're still far from the golden age of gaming. Like there's roughly two to three billion gamers. I think like there's a potential to have like six billion gamers. Everyone can become a gamer, but the kind of experience and game that we want to play, it's still to be invented. It's going to be at the cross crossing of uh, like different gameplay, Pokemon, but then you add FPS, you add like uh, mounting on creature, and you allow people to make their own vehicles or own mounts, etc. And that's become an exciting concept that brings people together. And it, it goes back to this idea again, like the fun part is about creating, it's about imagining your own game experience. It's really what, uh, and sharing that with others, that's the core and the beauty of it. And that's why our strategy at Sandbox is still once again this year to focus on the creator first. The success of the creator, giving them a lot of freedom about what they can do with the game maker, encouraging them. You are showing Geekies on screen. He's one of the top streamers that are sharing tutorials on almost a daily basis with the community to inspire them. This is what is going to drive it. Like You don't know yet what's successful, but I'm confident that Sandbox within the next one or two years will have a successful title on the platform and it will come from the community of creators. Well, I mean, you look at the success of Minecraft, you know, obviously they haven't uh, really gone the direction of NFTs. Most likely it's, we're going to see a ban coming at it. I don't know if they'll shift the cycle, but this is going to open up an opportunity, I feel like, for Sandbox in the sense of, to your point, of creators really uh, generating, I think, a, just a, a different viewpoint of how games are going to be done in the future. When you look at that and you think about, all right, let's, uh, let's go into whether it's mobile, whether we go into consoles, what does the roadmap look, look like for you guys? Well, I feel like we are going to focus still like on improving the sandbox on desktop first. And I think this year, like we'll move from an alpha version to a beta with a lot of major product updates, adding more rule system, faster loading, a better onboarding for all users. So like the brands I joined, they can like onboard their fans and their audience even faster. A lot of uh, mechanism that touch toward the meta gameplay, allowing like uh, achievement, uh, battle pass and uh, uh, creators even to make their own season system. Uh, the marketplace has opened, so creators can mint any content, but we'll also push for like um, lazy minting, a system that doesn't require even like a blockchain transaction until there's a purchase. Uh, we'll, we'll push forward like making your own collection of content, all in the support of the creator and how they could also like monetize at some point the content they publish on the platform. Uh, here we're seeing as well like how Sandbox is at the crossing of culture. So the fact that you can find uh, like uh, digital fashion, pushing for self-expression through our digital identity and avatars and those collection with brands, since we've collected with seven, 17 brands already and we'll have mm -hmm. probably 20 more this year that launch avatar collection. Those are things that will keep increasing our immersion the way we express ourselves, the way we connect with others and we play and earn or build and earn in the metaverse. Mobile will most likely come uh, by next year. We think 2025 will be uh, like the public launch of Sandbox with a mobile version with um, like an even greater user experience and uh, exciting content made by those creators that will start to kick uh, the masses into the, the metaverse. Well, there you have it. I, I think a lot of people have been looking at mobile. Do we get there first before maybe an opportunity with console? Uh, recently, I was testing the Apple Vision Pro as well. We were talking about platform. I think XR holds very interesting promise as well, but not, okay. not in the immediate short term future. Um, probably as well, five to 10 years until the technology mature becomes like more deployed across devices uh, and different regions of the world. But the fact that we can live and have into our uh, reality, which is blended between the physical reality and the virtual reality inside the, the headsets, at a resolution where like the, the 3D objects and the, the media files that you're watching through the Apple Vision is so detailed, you don't see any pixel, 
it feels like like it's just part of your of your surrounding environment. Right. Like all your digital yeah. content. Yes, that, that's me testing it. And I'm really excited to see like now I can play my with my digital asset. I can explore into a sandbox experience and all sorts of game. And I feel like it's just surrounding me and part of my daily life. And at that point, digital world or physical world will just be part of our day to day world where we where we, we we interact. I think you know and, uh, from an AR from an AR VR standpoint, you're right. I, I think that there are uh, first of all, this is really the first year of really seeing. Uh, a competitive marketplace with what we've seen with Meta, obviously Apple with their Vision Pro. Now, I think we'll start to see some real leaps forward in innovation just because of the competition side of things. Speaking of that, you've got to think about the console side of things. You look at what's happening with Off the Grid, Godzilla uh, Games, which has started to launch. This is most likely going to be, could be the most played Web3 game, maybe even a huge hit for, uh, for Off the Grid and the Godzilla team. How long before Sandbox could leap onto consoles on Xbox specifically? At the end of the day, we still I still think like Sandbox is kind of a startup. We're not that big of a team, so we're uh, we're interested interested into the long term of like how it could be accessible to more platform. Mm -hmm. But we haven't yet uh, had the chance to look from further at the console side. So like we'll start with PC, we'll go back to our roots, mobiles, and afterwards, uh, I think like it would be a good timing to explore uh, whether we, we push further toward XR or we go more toward the, the traditional console side. Well, that'll be the, that'll be the question. I mean, timing, if, if, you, you know, if you wait too long, you know, the, the console side of it could really become headset orientated, uh, whether it is XR, VR, you know, on, on that. I was looking at this tweet from you uh, Sandbox franchise originally started as a mobile game back in uh, 2011. So uh, you were kind of showing some some things there in terms of the progress around that. You're saying 25 though for mobile, and it could be even longer for something like a console uh, entry for Xbox. How I mean, you mentioned team size? How big is the team right now? So the team right now it's uh, roughly uh, a little bit over uh, 400 people across 12 different countries, um, plus a few like remote people. Uh, what's interesting and one of the strengths of Sandbox is really like, like our global culture. I think, uh, I don't know if uh, many people realize, but at the core Sandbox is part of like the Animo Caprans group. We're right. a Hong Kong uh, based company. And Asia plays a very important role for us, not only uh, because like originally that's where like the investors of Sandbox are with Square Enix from Japan, True Global Venture, Hash from Korea or Animoca Brands from Hong Kong, but because Asia over the last 12 months has really been leading the charge in terms of like adoption of the metaverse, in terms of brands, in terms of creators, in terms of landowners and sand holders, which are like all the different audiences that could overlap of the sandbox. And here we're showing like, actually this is a game that uh, one of our creators tweeted this morning and I just retweeted because I found like, look, every morning I connect to social media, I can see the creativity uh, and like the different creators who are using our game makers, they are pushing for new gameplay types. So I'm very confident it will emerge. But the creators, the top creators might not emerge from the traditional market that we've seen before, like US or Europe. Uh, we do have teams on the ground in India, in Vietnam, in Thailand, uh, as well as um, Turkey. And maybe uh, these are like where the next uh, big uh, hit makers will be from. And we hope to support that new wave of creators who were not making video games before. And that's been inspired by the sandbox and our no code uh, game maker to, to really push to our, them to success. Well, I think you're right. The, the markets that we're finding already, I mean, we see it just in our own viewership of our, of our channel. It's, it's a very global uh, orientation around Web3 gaming topics. So uh, it's good to see that you guys continue to go in that direction. What about um, the cross-chain aspect, whether it's on Solana, Avalanche, Ronin, you know, there's some great opportunities here. We've already started to see some movement in this space. Where are you guys on cross-chain? So, uh, first of all, like Sandbox now is fully on Polygon. So we finalize like uh, moving all the different kind of assets, which means like avatars have been minted directly on Polygon since the beginning of the year. All lands are on Polygon and any content made by the creator on the marketplace is also on Polygon since the end of last year. 
And that means that like, we've achieved like a transition and we can support now a lot of like EVM based uh, blockchain in the future for more interoperability. Uh, we've done also quite interesting bridges or, or not technically bridges, but more like interoperable um, interaction with other chains. Um, one of the avatar collections that we bridge among the 50 is uh, a project called Claymates. And it's actually one of the top NFT community on Cardano blockchain. So working with their team, we're able to uh, bring the ownership of one of those NFT from Cardano blockchain toward Polygon, allowing the owner to have a token that they can use to play uh, in sandbox, reflecting that ownership. It's quite exciting because that opens the door to a, like more blockchain ecosystem, could be Avalanche, yeah. Solana, Sai, Sui, etc. And indeed, cross-chain could be like a, a solution on the, 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 the back end that like allows users to not have to think through which blockchain they are and still allow them to, to play uh, across different games and services, contributing to more like uh, uh, discovery distribution of audiences within all those different blockchain ecosystems that right now are still if you think about it, they are still fragmented. Like uh, Solana and all the projects or across the Solana ecosystem don't really overlap with the Ethereum based ecosystem, but right. cross chain could be a solution. So now, like, audience grow and benefit the whole Web3 as a whole. Yeah. Well, I think this that's one of the, obviously, one of the big trends that I think we will see the successful projects and games really, uh, you know, benefit from, especially when you look at. What's happening with Avalanche, their gaming ecosystem has grown a, a lot here recently. And then you also just look at the Solana ecosystem, which seems to be growing, even though not maybe not quite as fast. More micro games, a lot of deep end projects that are kind of going in that direction. Um, I want to talk about AI last up for you in terms of AI for game generation tools. Uh, there's a lot of function and use case that we're seeing that. But when you look at a creator economy and a builder economy, AI tools may be a big feature. Is this something that's coming our way within Sandbox? I, I definitely believe AI is a technology that can like empower even more the creators and make uh, content creation more accessible. Like we can see just from text prompt or painting like here, like now uh, anyone can become a creator. And uh, that means like instead of maybe a few hundred million of people, we're touching like billion of people who can just write and type or, or, or draw like this. It's really exciting. And so far at Sandbox, again, like we see ourselves more as a startup. We don't have like internal team working on AI itself, but we partner with leading company in the space, Layer AI, Kinetics, GGWP, and that allow us to text and experiment very fast, like uh, 2D and 3D uh, content generation for avatars, game assets in 3D in voxels, uh, land generation as well, or even in the future, like hopefully creating uh, game rules and, and game system to add uh, 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 more fun and different kind of logic and gameplays. We're already using AI for uh, in-game uh, moderation, reducing like uh, toxicity within the conversation among players so they can have like a safer and more enjoyable experience. We're also using AI to capture uh, human body movement from just smartphone video streams and that allows us to make like avatars body movement much more expressive, reinforcing the human touch that we can bring to our character. So that's me, that's my uh, like yep. digital twin in the metaverse, so people can recognize me. But when we launch new avatar collection, some of them comes from like music artists, dance, and we apply that technology to their dance move, so it becomes more fluid and uh, people can enjoy uh, like uh, expressing themselves with these emotes. Last question I have for you is partners. Uh, any major partnership that brought the most players? I'm kind of curious on trends of how partnerships are applying within Sandbox. We, you know, it's since the beginning we made, we partnered with major brands such as Snoop Dogg, Steve Aoki, The Walking Dead, Ubisoft, etc. And uh, 
definitely Snoop Dogg has been the leading ambassadors and brought uh, a lot of audiences back in 2020 into the sandbox. We can see here the doggies, the collection of 10,000 unique avatars, each one being an NFT. And since then, we've launched 19 other avatar collection with a major brand and IP. Uh, Agoria DJ, Attorney Wu, uh, drama from Korea, uh, Shin Tae Young, a football uh, character. Today we announced Maradona, the legendary football player in partnership mm -hmm. with Crypto.com. We touch different vertical, and those are helping to bring new users into the metaverse, and that also shaping the metaverse as something really unique. It's a place which is very inclusive and diverse almost like a modern film park where you meet all those different characters who can be male, female, non-binary, or even non-human. And it's exciting when you see a little rabbit character running within a Walking Dead world or a Smurf that interact with, I don't know, Paris Hilton, for example, or uh, Gordon Ramsay from Hell's Kitchen or Elvis Presley as well. It gives more and more freedom to our, like how we can choose who we want to be how we interact, which community we are part from, and we can use those content to also be more creative and inspire. And there will be exciting um, partnership coming along this year with really major, major IPs. Uh, okay. Here we're, we're seeing Minecraft video. You can see like uh, like the inspiration of like uh, various contents. That's quite fun. I think it's around yeah. like uh, movies. Yeah. <laughs> I will find something similar in Sandbox as well. There you go. Well, that's the key is uh, is really kind of you know bridging the gap. I think for Web three and the future of gaming for sure. Sebastian, it's always fun having you on the show. Thank you so much for the deep dive on where Sandbox is today. We appreciate it. Thank you, Paul, and see you all in the metaverse. All right, take care. All right, you guys are tuned in. Maybe over on the podcast side of things, jump over here to the YouTube channel because you're going to get a, a visual display of what we're talking about, especially in these Web three game projects. It's very important that you see this because it's, um, I think, gives you a, a much more depth in understanding the capacity and the opportunity here. So make sure and tune into the YouTube channel. Subscribe right now. Hit that little like button. It does help other people find the videos that I think are going to get a lot of people educated on the future of Web3. If you're not following me on X, it's very simple. At Paul Barron. Catch you next time right here on TechBath.